New commitment for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish in the 2024 class, and it's a safety, Kennedy Erlocker out of Chandler, Arizona. And if the last name sounds familiar, let's just say yes. The answer that you are asking is uh, yes. Uh, that is Brian Erlocker's son, uh, nation's number 683 overall player, number 71 safety per the on three industry ranking, a three star prospect across the board. Um, so, yeah, not a highly ranked guy, Tim, but uh, yeah, I mean, you, you kind of throw out the cliche that if he, uh, you know, ends up as, uh, you know, half the players is, is his father, uh, Brian Urlacher, one of the greatest, you know, uh, defensive players to, to ever roam the gridiron, then Notre Dame's got a pretty good get here. But rankings aside, Tim, what do you see on his film? Like, what, what, what do you see when you're, when you're watching this huddle here? Yeah, I mean, well, first, he's an athlete. So when you look at the rankings, you're kind of like interested because how many strong safeties in America are as, as you know, free willing with contact as this young man? He is just aggressive. He's very fast. I mean, there's some plays on here where you just see his athleticism just shine. You know, Chandler, Arizona, really good high school football in that region as well. So look at the block uh, kick right there. He He's an athlete. So he's a good football player, like you're saying. Rankings sometimes are what they are. I mean, they throw them out, and then, they, as you know, they get it reevaluated 10 times over a year. So um, he's got a lot of really good physical traits, definitely a strong safety, down-in-the-box type of football player. Reminds me of a lot of old Notre Dame football players. You know, you look at Kyle McCarthy, you know, Haloti Gilman, who just finished playing, and, and I would even stick him into Xavier Watts type of a player. You know, when you look at it, very aggressive. Zayer watch people forget. I know he came as a wide receiver, but he was a heck of a DB in high school. So uh, he's in those types of strong safety, physical, unafraid to hit people type of safeties and a really good get for Notre Dame. Yeah, I, I, I like the Xavier Watts comparison. I think that's uh, yeah, that's a pretty, pretty good one. Both both physical players, like you mentioned. Body size as well. Yeah, you know? Absolutely. A lot of people, you know, kind of think, oh, well. Uh, he, he's so physical, you know, his size listed at uh, 6'1", 180. Does he, you know, end up bulking up and, and, and playing linebacker like his father? Or does he end up as a rover? Do you have any thoughts on this or do you do you like him as a safety? I would, I mean, you know, he shows up obviously, it's a, you know, you know, next year and whatnot. But I would definitely keep him at safety just because Notre Dame needs numbers and you recruit him to play safety. So he's not like a. 205. He's, you know, 180 poundish, 185 pounder, 6'1. Perfect uh, safety size to mold into that position. So, and he's got, he's not slow. That is one thing about him. He's not slow when you watch his film. So, I hope Notre Dame just, I mean, he's going to be a box guy, strong safety. When you say rover to me nowadays, whenever every time I hear the word term rover, it's just, it's a third safety, third corner, whatever you want to use. It's really a, a fifth DB on the field. So I think he could definitely play that type of a position. So he's a good hybrid. When I say strong safety, the Rover, that outside backer, he's definitely a combo there, but definitely keep him at safety. They got plenty of Mike and Wills. They got plenty of guys, 225, 235 that could play there and let him play that back end is what I would do. And quick look uh, at his recruiting process, Tim, um, and in his offer list, he had Notre Dame, TCU, uh, I know it's a school he really liked, Kansas State, Miami, Kansas, uh, Penn State, Wisconsin, Iowa, Nebraska, the Arizona school, Stanford. Um, you know, when you always I always like to see Stanford on the offer list for, you know, kids at Notre Dame's recruiting because that just kind of says, hey, you know, the, 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 it kind of reinforces just how good of students they are in Washington. So, I mean, it's not like he had as a bad offer list by any stretch. Pretty impressive. Um, and. You know, when I was interviewing him um, about his commitment before he announced it, um, you know, he told me that for a while there, you know, he, he thought that it might have been Miami for him. Uh, but then he visited Notre Dame for the first time in mid-April. And then um, that just blew him away. You know, all the four for 40, all that stuff about Notre Dame, um, but also just the connection between um, you know, him and the Notre Dame staff. And he said he was very observant between watching the Notre Dame staff and how they interact um, with their players. Um, so I think that was kind of interesting um, to note that, uh, yeah, th those things were very important to him. Uh, also, Tim should be noted, just Notre Dame and these legacies here. You have, um, you know, on Saturday was that April 28th, you had Notre Dame landing a commitment from Bryce Young, the son of, 
a uh, former uh, Notre Dame legend. And of course, uh, this is uh, Kennedy Erlocker, the son of uh, Brian Erlocker. And uh, just wanted to pull up Notre Dame's uh, commitment list um, here in the 2024 class. Um, you know, up to 13 commitments now with Erlocker. Tim, just as we scroll this, what are your thoughts? Because you've said when, you know, going back to, you know, when we were covering the 2023 class, that man, that 2024 class, that's going to be the big, the biggie for Notre Dame and, and, and Tim Hyde terms. What are you thinking about how this group is coming together? Yeah. I mean, I would, just going back to the history, as I've talked about that many times of the head coach in their second full recruiting year has always been better at Notre Dame. So there's still some big guys out there, as you know, Mike, there's plenty of top 100, you know, so, you know, obviously, you know, Justin Scott, you know, as well, the big, you know, five-star there, but uh, there's still some guys that they're, that they're going after, you know, obviously trying to flip, you know, Caleb Beasley, who's a top 100 type of player, uh, the running back, you know, you got, you know, young, who's what top 100 on the on three. So there's still, you know, it's still early. We always talk about that. You know, this is now starting to become a typical Notre Dame group where they get a bunch of commits after spring between now and June, going to do all their officials in June. You know, the majority of the officials will be in June and come July. I think you, I think we're going to have what 90%. I'm going to be surprised if 90% of this class is wrapped up. You know, maybe that's a high number, but technically, I mean, they start to fill up before these kids are now starting to make decisions even earlier than a year before, two years ago of wanting to commit before their senior year. And then they'll take some game visits and whatnot to solidify with Notre Dame and everything, but it still could be good. You know, when I say, can it, you know, can it be top five? There's some guys out there that can, it's going to be tough because those Southern, you know, most of the recruitants are so Southern dominant, but if you get a Scott, if you get an Asa out of St. John Bosco, if you could flip Caleb Beasley, uh, you know, you get, you know, the running backs that they're on, you know, Kerry's coming out, who's a nationally ranked player. Young is up there. Can it dip into that? Those will be a fun conversation in the summer as they start to get some of these guys. But, you know, it's, uh, it, I think it's going to be another 70% blue chip when it's all said and done. And that's kind of been the key, even looking at the NFL draft, how many of these classes dominated by the 70% blue chips are being drafted uh, recently as well. I mean, uh, we are recording this video before Erlocker announced the news. So um, it's actually 13 commitments. Now it says 12 here. But again, yeah, we recorded this before. But um, in terms of the blue chip ratio, again, this would be before 67% Erlocker's commitment would bring that down a little bit. But like Tim mentioned, uh, definitely a long ways to go Big um, fish before out there. we get, um, you know, yeah, that, that percentage will definitely change. Um, so yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Make sure to hit that thumbs up, subscribe to our channel if you have not done so yet to catch more content. Um, Kennedy Erlocker, safety out of Chandler, Arizona, son of Brian Erlocker, who by the way did have a, or I should say Marcus Freeman had a brief stint with the Chicago Bears when he was in the NFL for you know that short period of time um, and, and played with Erlocker. So those guys have a connection going back to 2009. Um, so yeah, that's the news. Kennedy or Lucker picking the fighting Irish hit that thumbs up folks. And as always, we'll catch you next time.